Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Womanist Wednesdays. This next session um, for this video blog series, we are going to be discussing those preaching Methodist women. We're going to be looking into the lives of Jarena Lee, uh, Zilpha Elaw, and Julia Foote. As you see here on my board, there is a picture here of the Reverend Jarena Lee. Um, there, I was unable to find a picture of Zilpha Elaw, which just continues to speak to the ways that um, African Americans were um, made to be uh, invisible and where our stories were not correctly uh, captured and kept and um, yeah so just a lot to say of why is there no picture of Zilpha Elam however there is a picture of Julia Foote and so I welcome you to this series of uh, Womenist Wednesdays those preaching Methodist women so I am doing this for a class I'm currently in um, United Methodist History, Polity, and Doctrine, um, which is an online class taught through Garrett uh, Evangelical Theological Seminary. And um, so this is my video blog, a three-part series where I am going to introduce you to women who contributed greatly to evangelism in the 19th century, specifically black Methodist women. Okay, I am um, new to United Methodist Church. I am currently on the path for ordination, hoping to be commissioned once I meet with the board um, in February. And so on this journey, really grateful for the stories of these women. So, um, Due to women being looked upon as exhorters, uh, leaders of prayer meetings, and missionaries, they were overlooked for their contributions to evangelism in America. 19th century America proved to be a challenging time for women who were faced with the oppressive forces of racism, patriarchy, and sexism, along with biblical interpretations and denominational, denominational policies, which excluded them from pulpits and access to licensure and ordination. However, despite all that stood against them, many women accepted their call to preach and evangelize, and they did so in the face of great danger, ostracization, broken marriages, and even the neglect of their own children. During a time when women were expected to conform to traditional gender roles and maintain the status quo, Jarena Lee, Julia Foote, and Z Zilpha Elah, Three African-American women associated with the Methodist tradition overcame personal and societal obstacles. They broke through glass ceilings and served as missionaries and evangelists by fully trusting in the God that called them into ministry. Even in the face of rejection by their spouses, peers, and denominational leaders. And so during this series, I'm going to introduce you to each of these women. We'll kind of look at their call stories, their ministries, uh, discuss the obstacles that they overcame, and the contributions that they made to missions and evangelism. So today we're going to be looking at Jarena Lee. This first blog is going to be just a little bit longer because of the introduction that I did before. But so Jarena Lee is known to many as the first woman who was authorized to preach in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, she was author authorized by its founder, Richard Allen. Lee, uh, Richard Allen. And so Jarena Lee was born on February the 11th of 1783 in Cape May, New Jersey, to parents who were actually free, but they later hired her out as a servant when she was only seven years old. Uh, Jarena Lee converted to Christianity in 1804 at the age of 21, but she spent the next four years battling emotional distress which caused her to doubt her salvation. It even led her to attempt suicide on several occasions. She struggled with being able to believe that she was truly saved by God. She had a she struggled to receive God's prevenient grace as we would say in the Methodist Church. She eventually met a man named William Scott who taught her about the doctrine of sanctification as was taught by the founder of Methodism John Wesley. 
Wesley's doctrine on sanctification and holiness was instrumental and foundational in Lee's life and in the lives of many other African American women evangelists. In her 19th century, in, in her memoir, uh, The Life and Religious Experience of Jerina Lee, she recalls actually hearing the voice of God telling her to go and preach the gospel. And I just found that, I find that to be amazing considering that in the Indiana United Methodist Conference, um, that's our motto. It is to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And here she is. She hears the voice of God telling her to go and preach the gospel. She replies to this voice that no one will believe her. And the voice tells her again, preach the gospel. I will put words in your mouth and will turn your enemies to become your friends. She struggles with this call and upon verbalizing her sense of call to preach, she was rejected by Richard Allen. She was denied the right to pursue an official ministerial capacity, but was given permission to hold prayer meetings and to exhort the crowds after the licensed male ministers preach their sermons. How about being pushed to the margins? Let's talk about sexism in the church and the ways that patriarchy pushed women ministers to the margin and failed to recognize their call, failed to accept their full humanity. Here it is. And we are still seeing a lot of this, this struggle. We're still seeing the forces of patriarchy continue to marginalize women even today in 2018, where there are many Methodist churches that will not accept women, that do not fully recognize the call of God on women as if we need a penis to preach the gospel. Selah. And so... Uh, during this time, it was common for women to be limited to exhortation and prayer, uh, which kept them subordinate to men and uh, unable to fully walk in their call. And so Lee, she soon uh, met and married Joseph Lee, a pastor from Philadelphia, who also did not support her call to preach. They ended up having two children. So that's part of her call story, but let's talk about her ministry. So Lee operated faithfully in this limited capacity, exhorting souls to receive salvation after other preachers preached until she received her break in ministry in 1819. She attended a church service at Bethel Church where the male preacher who was called was struggling, unable to preach. She interrupted him and she finished his sermon using the same text that he was struggling with. Her bold act resulted in Alan recognizing her call, uh, apologizing publicly, and authorizing her to preach. Although she, was author, although she was authorized to preach, this call to ministry came with many challenges and obstacles. Uh, Radical Spiritual Motherhood is a book that tells a story that reflects Lee's commitment to the call of ministry and her persistence to do God's will despite the many challenges that she faced. She lost five family members in a six-year span, including her husband, and was left to care for her sixth son. It was during this time that she received a call for her first itinerant assignment, which was a week-long preaching engagement. She was so committed to this engagement that Jerina Lee left her sick child with neighbors to care for her child. According to Lee, she says that it takes an act of God to keep her from thinking about her sick child so much so that she would devote herself fully to the assignment which was before her. Wow. She overcame these obstacles, but she had more obstacles in front of her. And sentimental confessions... Jocelyn Moody explains that Lee was often attacked as indecent and unnatural. It's one thing for people to not um, for people to not recognize your call and affirm your call, but people were attacking the way that Jerina Lee looked. One of her first congregations that she experienced, um, the congregants used vile and demeaning language, including telling her that she was not a woman, but that she was a man dressed in women's clothing. She experienced oppositions from blacks and whites as she continued to minister and preach the gospel while declaring, that the Lord supported the woman preacher and my soul was cheered. 
She didn't care what the people had to say because her mind was fixed on Jesus. Her mind was set on the Lord. And she knew that the Lord called her to preach. And so she um, continues preaching. Her ministry led her to preach in Philadelphia, Baltimore, and in Maryland, to Rochester, throughout New York, as far as Dayton, Ohio. She preached to both black and white audiences. And this right here is what um, seeing that if she was able to preach to black and white audiences back in the 19th century, then I, being a black woman, can definitely stand in white congregations and preach the gospel in 2018 where I have a lot more freedom and support and a lot more affirmation even though there are still obstacles that I have to face in 2018 but this right here Jarena Lee encourages me to go forward preaching the gospel she fearlessly traveled into slaveholding states and um she was once uh, harassed by 10 to 11 white men back in 1824. They came searching her home where she was staying and they were challenging her authority um, in a state court. And the court upheld her credentials, but they attempted to frighten her out of the state. And Lee still believed wholeheartedly in a God that would fight her battles and in a God that will punish those who came against her. My God, it is reported that she prophesied to friends that God would make an example out of those who were trying to punish her. And one year later, several of those men either died or experienced severe hardship according to the words that she spoke. My God, this woman, this woman believed in God's call on her life, but she also stood flat footed in the midst of those obstacles, in the midst of threats, believing not only that she was called, but believing in a God that would protect her. And when people ask me, Anetra, how is it that you are committing to being an itinerant minister and you're in the state of Indiana, in a state where there is a lot of racism? And I say, if God will protect Jarena Lee in the 19th century, then God will protect me and my two black children in 2018. So... Jarena Lee preaches the gospel. She's a woman of resilience. She was successful in her ministerial pursuit. She greatly contributed to the world of mission and evangelism. It is said that in 1835, she traveled over 700 miles and preached almost the same number of sermons and gained acceptance in the all-male AME hierarchy, although she was never licensed. In 1836, she joined the American Anti-Slavery Society, convinced that through uh, abolitionism, the gospel will have free course to every nation. She believed that God was calling her to record the work that God was do doing through her and finding in an editor to help convert her journal into a printable form. She spent uh, she spent thirty eight dollars to have a thousand copies of her book printed in 1836, followed by another thousand copies printed in 1839. Although the AME Church uh, forbade itinerant preachers from publishing books without approval, Jarena Lee went ahead. She financed and published her book, the religious. Um, she financed the publishing of her religious experience and journal in 1849, even after they refused to grant her permission. And so she experienced rejection and resistance from the a a AME, but her persistence and success in ministry became appealing to the many women who were also feeling called to preach. In 1850, a group of women formed their own organization in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia Conference, with the goal of, assign of assigning themselves appointments to preach. Come on, those preaching women. Listen. If y'all want to sign us, we will assign ourselves. That is powerful. It is likely that Lee was part of this organization. It was shut down in 1852 by a group of all-male clergy. I just find it astounding the ways that a patriarchy continues to 
repeat itself, you know, that that in the same ways that African Americans were shut down by white counterparts, the moment that men get into positions of power, they use their power to shut down their fellow uh, sisters in the AME. And so while we cannot, while we can gather sufficient amount of information from Lee's autobiography, there's still so much more that we do not know about her ministerial pursuits and the vast impact that she made to the kingdom of God by winning souls for Christ and by preaching the unadulterated word of God in the face of so many obstacles. The AME posthumously ordained Jerina Lee during their 50th quadrennial session in 2016 go figure however um i am i have been um i have been um honored to graduate to attend and graduate from the jarena lee preaching academy which is um which was created and founded by my mentor, the Reverend Dr. Valerie Bridgman, who is the current Dean of Methodist Theological Schools of Ohio. I attended the Jarena Lee Preaching Academy, where women are taught to hone our prophetic voice, uh, to find our voice, amen, and to preach the prophetic and liberating word of Jesus Christ. I graduated from the Jarena Lee Preaching Academy and then became an FTE mentee, uh, being mentee entered directly by Dr. Valerie Bridgman, uh, myself and four other young preachers. And so um, Jarena Lee, um, she's made her story and her story is my story and I salute her today. So that's who we have today, uh, Jarena Lee uh, on Womanist Wednesday. So tune in to the next session of those Preaching Methodist Women where we will next talk about Zilpha Elaw. So join me. I hope that you have learned a lot about the life and story of uh, Jarena Lee. Tune back in for Zilpha Elaw. Have a blessed day. And remember to honor those Preaching Methodist Women.